less than 10 minutes each, but for each one, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, modifications or things that you can do different for you to enjoy. Uh, for you, I have two sweet snacks and one savory one, okay? So the first one that we're going to start with uh, is a very simple one. Uh, that's why I'm going to start with that, that one. The first one that I have for you is a chia pudding. Chia puddings I love because you can make them for breakfast, you can make them as a snack. And one of the advantages of chia puddings is that you can modify them however you want. So for example, if you want to make them more chocolate, uh, like chocolatey, uh, you can add a uh, cocoa powder, you can add chocolate protein powder if you want to increase the protein intake. If you want to have it like more fruity or berry uh, type of uh, chia pudding, you can add strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. In this case, I'm going to make it a uh, peanut butter. Uh, so what we're going to do is that we're going to grab uh, a jar. Um, I mostly use like a uh, jars that I have at home you can use like mason jars as well and um, whatever works so what you're going to do is that you're going to grab chia and um, what you're going to do is that you're going to place a couple of tablespoons of chia seeds so grab a couple of tablespoons and then what you do is that you grab your favorite uh, dairy option or milk-based alternative. Remember that if you're going to use a uh, milk, uh, it's going to be a little bit higher in carbs. If you use a nut-based alternative, a uh, macadamia nut or almond milk or whatever nut milk of your choice, it's going to be on the lower carb end. So. For every two tablespoons of chia seeds, you're going to add a one cup of almond milk, okay? So what I normally do is that I just make sure to start adding the milk until it is one cup or until the jar is full okay so then what you do is that you start mixing it and once you mix it then you can start adding all the things that it wants so for example in my case what i'm going to do is that i'm going to add a couple of packets of stevia uh, you can start with one um when it comes to chia puddings i usually like to have them sweet so I put a couple of tablespoons or a couple of packets of the um, stevia. And then what you can do is, I usually like to add vanilla. So I just add half a teaspoon or just like a dash of vanilla. A little bit of salt. And then you mix, okay? And now you have your chia pudding. Um, you put this into a fridge, uh, hopefully eight hours, hopefully the entire night. So hope, uh, try to make it overnight. What the chia does is that it's going to start absorbing all of the water from the milk. So it's going to start soaking it up and it's going to create like this gel type of pudding um, that is going to be delicious. As a recommendation, um, if you're going to add more powders, cocoa powder, protein powder, um, anything that's powdery, you can add. Otherwise, I recommend for you to start adding the toppings whenever this is uh, already, it already had the eight hours, eight to 12 hours in the, in the fridge, okay? If you start adding other things, um, like for example, if you add fruits, it might end up being soggy. So that's not like a, if you enjoy that uh, texture, that's totally fine. In my case, I don't like soggy fruits. So that's why I usually add it at the end. And when it comes to peanut butter, you can also add it uh, here as well to have a, like to soak up the flavor. If not, just a tablespoon of peanut butter on top with some crushed nuts, that's going to be the best way so again, uh, make sure to add them at the end when this is already soaked, okay? You cover it 
and then you put it in the freezer or in the fridge, sorry. That's the first one that I have, which as you see, it took me less than five minutes. Um, it's something very easy to, to make and it's very, every, everyone in the family can enjoy. They can modify them according to their needs. So that's why uh, I love making chia puddings. The second option that I have for you, uh, we're going to go into the savory dessert, uh, the savory snack. So the savory snack is going to be a microwave keto bread, okay? So what you do, you grab a plate or a dish that it can go into the microwave. You grab a um, butter or ghee. This is one tablespoon of ghee. You grab almond flour. You're going to place three tablespoons of almond flour. Now, why do I normally recommend almond flour? You can switch it for your coconut flour. That's totally fine. Couple of things with, uh, with coconut flour. Coconut flour has a stronger taste. So a lot of people don't like uh, the taste of coconut. If you have it uh, blanched, it usually doesn't have uh, the coconut flavor. However, uh, coconut tends to absorb a lot of moisture. So if you're not careful and you don't know how to make the switch between them, like for example, if the recipe states for almond milk, you cannot replace the almond, uh, almond uh, flour for coconut flour because coconut flour tends to absorb more moisture. This means that whenever you place it in the heat, cooking or microwave or baking, it's going to be a little bit drier than expected. So generally, uh, reduce the amount by half whenever you're using coconut flour, but you need to be, it's trial and error because with coconut fl uh, flour, that's why I eh, don't like to use it that much. For that case, I usually prefer um, almond flour. So you grab the almond flour, you grab the, uh, the, the, the butter, you grab another plate, you grab one egg, then you're going to beat up that egg, you're going to whisk it, you add the, uh, the butter into the egg, you whisk it again. You add a pinch of salt. And then what you're going to do is that you're going to grab a, a um, baking powder and you're going to place half a teaspoon, place it first into the almond flour and mix it okay then what you can do is you grab the uh, the dry ingredients and you mix them together okay this is for a traditional microwave keto bread uh, again, one of the advantages of making keto bread is that you can always modify it. What do I mean by this? You can always add the herbs and spices of your choice. So for example, if one of my favorite ways to make it is to add some basil, some dried basil um, and some oregano, put it into the microwave. And then when it gets out, I put some tomato cherries on top and some mozzarella and it's a very high protein snack that, that I'm sure that you're going to enjoy. So in the end, it's going to have like a runny consistency, okay? So what you do, in my case, you can put it into any container of your choice. In my case, I usually make them into two small containers because I like for them to be thin. You can slice it. In my case, I prefer to do it a little bit thinner. So I just grab it. And I usually divide it in two so that I can have two small snacks in case I want to make a sandwich, okay? 
If your um, dish is not, um, you can always grease it to prevent it from, from sticking to the side. If not, you can just place it in the microwave. In the microwave, we're going to place it for 90 minutes, uh, 90, 90 seconds, sorry. Um, and they're going to be about done. When the 90 seconds are over, uh, you check them. If they're spongy, they're done. If they're still a little bit runny, you can place them for another 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you can see, the, um, the microwave keto bread is a very easy recipe to make. Um, the benefit is that since you're not using a uh, flour base, um, it doesn't have a lot of carbs. Almond uh, flour tends to be lower in carbs, high, higher in protein, and higher in fats, which is ideal for those that are trying to decrease their carb intake. Uh, since it's like a, a bread alternative, you can use it uh, breakfast, and snack, uh, even for lunch. If you can chop it up into pieces and then you can place it into a, a, a salad. It's a very versatile option. I usually prefer to do it as a snack. But again, you can use it any weight of your choice. Since um, the only protein source that we're going to have are the eggs, I always recommend for a snack to boost the protein a little bit more. So you can always add some cheese on top. Some people uh, add cheese at the inside the, the batter. You can do that as well. Um, I always prefer to keep it simple. I just modify it with some herbs or spices and then Whenever it gets out of the microwave, then I usually uh, add the things on top. Okay. Um, never tried it, but you can try to make it into a sweet base type of bread. You just remove the salt and then you can try adding the stevia. Again, I haven't tried it, but that's an idea that we can try maybe next time. Okay. And be careful when you take it out of the microwave. Okay, so see, now you have it. See, you have the bread and it's going to have like a spongy consistency. See, it's a little bit hot, but see, it's going to have like a spongy consistency. It's easy to have, so you can just place, take it out, and then you can place it. Here's one, and here is the other one. So it's going to have the form of that plate that you're going to, to put them in. In my case, they're a little bit spongy and thick, but that's how I like them. Um, if not, you can, again, you can just cut them up um, and make small sandwiches. That is one of the other recipes that I have for you. These simple, as you can see, it took us 10 minutes probably. Um, the, I think that the longest time was maybe when, since we were waiting the 90 seconds in the microwave, but it's a fairly easy option for you to make. Okay, so keto microwave cake, uh, bread. The last option that I have for you is going to be, do we have questions? Sorry, one, one question we have from the audience. Between butter and ghee, which one do you recommend and any differences? Okay. Nice question. Okay. Um, personally, I prefer ghee. Uh, it has a more cheesy type of flavor. That's why I really like it. Um, nutritionally speaking, ghee might be a little bit better because it's... Okay. The difference between butter and ghee is that ghee comes from butter. Um, whenever you... I don't know if you've ever tried microwaving like a, a bar of butter. And when you microwave it, uh, there are certain like uh, solids that start going to the top. Those are called like impurities, more or less. 
Uh, in the GI process, those impurities are removed. So you, you are left with a more a concentrated butter, okay? Um, they're both equally good. Uh, since it's been clarified, I usually recommend uh, GI. It has um, a little bit more um, fats. It has a little bit more nutrients. Um, and the main reason why I usually choose ghee is because of the flavor. Um, but uh, butter has a buttery flavor. Uh, ghee, for those of you who have tried it, uh, it has a cheesy buttery flavor, which I really, really like. Any option is great. It really depends on your choice or your flavor. Nutritionally speaking, ghee is a little bit better, but that, that difference, it's not like, uh, going from almond flour to regular flour, there's not that vast of a difference, you know? In the end, it's really a matter of which one do you prefer. Ghee might be my choice, but if you use butter, that's equally fine. Okay, the last one. We have the mug cake. Um, so when it comes to the mug cake, we're going to need another tablespoon of melted butter. Again, I use ghee. And we're going to use almond flour, we're going to use stevia or monk fruit or whichever sugar-free sweetener you have. We're going to use peanut butter, a baking powder, an egg, and vanilla, okay? So you grab a, a bowl, make sure that it's microwave safe. You put, you place the butter. You add one tablespoon, no, sorry, three tablespoons of almond flour. Mm -hmm. You add one or two packets of the um, sugar sweetener of your choice. In this case, I'm going to add two. If you use granulated, it might work out better. If not, that's totally fine. And we have the butter, the almond, the uh, sugar. We add the peanut butter. Okay, so we're going to put one tablespoon. You can put one to two tablespoons of peanut butter. Okay. Now, now that I see it, I'm going to go over one of the most frequent questions I ask. Have you realized like whenever you buy like a natural peanut or almond or any butter, a eh, nut butter of your choice, that it starts to have like the solid form and then the oil. That doesn't mean that it has gone bad. It just has separated. But what you do is that you whisk it and then it's totally fine to consume. Eh, a lot of people ask me that, that if you can still have it, it hasn't gone bad. You can still eh, use it. Okay. The peanut butter, we're going to the, uh, add just a splash vanilla. You add one egg, but make sure to add it already beaten or whisked. And I made a mess. Okay, you whisk it. Once it is whisked, you add it here. And I am missing the baking powder. So you grab one teaspoon and you add half a teaspoon of the baking powder. Okay. So now what you do is that you start mixing it. I know I've said it quite a lot, but that's why I chose uh, these recipes. One of the things that I really like about the mug cake is that you can make them, again, the flavor of your choice. In my case, I decided to, uh, uh, to make it peanut butter, but for example, you can make it peanut butter and if you purchase a uh, sugar-free chocolate chips, you can add peanut butter with chocolate chips. You can make it just plain vanilla to add, I don't know, some, some berries on top, you can add some cocoa powder to make it a chocolate version of the uh, mug cake. 
really it depends on which flavors you want to add um some people even have like um flavored um protein powder so you can also add it into the mix to have a little bit more um more protein if you do decide to add the protein powder make sure that it is no more than half a scoop because otherwise it might change the consistency it might make it a little bit drier since you're adding more more dry ingredients so if you add it just make sure no more than half a scoop um if you still don't like the how it turns out just one quarter of a scoop and it's going to be totally fine so as you can see it is like a runny consistency with the mug cake sometimes they might be at 60 seconds sometimes at 90 seconds it depends on 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 various factors so i usually put it in i usually add it 60 seconds first and if it's not ready i add it by 30 seconds so 60 seconds from 30 i check it out if it's still not done i add another 30 seconds until i get the consistency of, of that i like i don't like it that dry and um, so i that's why i usually like to put it into smaller uh, smaller amounts if you play some chocolate chips try to put it into the center so that whenever you open it it's going to be like this gooey uh, amazing um runny type of lava cake uh, that i'm very sure that you're going to enjoy and the best thing is that since you're using a uh, almond flour you're not using regular flour and you're not ad adding any other carb options uh, it is a very low carb uh, snack for you to have and um, there are several ways that you can do mug cakes. That's my favorite one. Hey, just I'm starting to get hungry with all the cooking. We um, have, we have two questions from the audience. One of them is, yeah, two. So one of them is, can we remove slash reduce sugar in recipes you gave if we want to limit our sugar intake? Um, and the second was, could you add a little coconut flour replacing some almond flour? Okay, um, the sugar, uh, yes, you can always reduce it. I'm using stevia, so it's not going, it's not adding any added sugars um, or high calorie sugar. In my case, I do, I place two packets because I like it sweet. Uh, if you want to add one packet, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure that you're using stevia or monk fruit so that you don't increase the amount of sugar or calories in these uh, recipes. The other one with the coconut flour yes you can use it um but uh, as we've mentioned um coconut flour tends to soak water so whenever you replace almond flour with coconut flour it's going to make the dish or the snack drier so yes you can use it i always recommend um like if the if the recipe states for almond flour cut back the almond flour by half so for example, if it says three tablespoons of almond flour, cut it down to one and a half of coconut flour, because otherwise, if you replace it one to one, three tablespoons for almond flour for three tablespoons of coconut flour, it's going to be very dry. Um, but uh, reduce it by half, but it's going to be trial and error until you have like that consistency that you like, because with coconut flour is a little bit, uh, more challenging to work with because of that because it soaks up moisture and it makes everything a lot drier that's why i usually prefer cooking with a uh, almond flour whenever i'm creating low carb low carb options and the mug cake is done okay 60 seconds you have no idea how wonderful it smells it smells so peanut buttery I hope you could be here with me and enjoy it. Um, so whenever you grab a spoon, it's going to have like a consistency, kind of like the keto bread. Um, if you want to have it a little bit more runny or soft, not so dry, you can put it 45 seconds 
or try with 30 and then start increasing it slowly by 10 seconds until you get the consistency of your choice. Here, you can then add, um, you can add strawberries, you can add the sugar-free chocolate chips, or you can add a sugar-free chocolate syrup or sugar-free maple syrup, whichever you want or like. Or you can put nut seeds. Uh, you can even add some chia seeds on top uh, to have an extra dose of omega-3, whichever you like. It's going to be, to be great. Mm -hmm. And it tastes just as wonderful as it smells. So I recommend that you try it. Those are the three options that I have for you. So again, we have the mug cake, we have the keto bread, and as you can see, it takes a little bit of time, but you can see that it is starting to soak. Once it starts soaking, it's going to create that pudding, and that is when you can have like that pudding type a snack, um, which I'm probably going to enjoy as well. I don't know if you have any other questions or anything else you would like for me or for us to go over. Love the recipes, really great and useful info. So thank you. And thank you everyone for joining. Really appreciate uh, everyone's time. And Brenda, thank you again. I love the recipes and they look certainly great. All right. I'm going to send them uh, I don't to see you any so more questions can, on the uh, to see if you can share them. Yes, yes, please do send them. We do have in the recipe section of the app, we do have specific keto uh, recipes. We we have a few of those um, listed as well. So we do have someone at, just in the question section, someone posted wait. So I'll wait for 30 seconds to see if someone uh, posts their question. Um, in, in the meantime, yeah, we do have uh, uh, several keto recipes. And uh, Brenda, if you can send me those, I will post a link to this video and I'll, uh, and I'll write down the specific steps and ingredients for people to follow. Um, and so if anyone's missed it or missed a step or part of Thanks. this video, they can go, go back to it. Okay, so we have the question. Um, if you Any want, beans? sorry, and if you want just vanilla, how does the consistency change? Okay, um, for the mug cake, I'm wondering. Um, okay, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm assuming it's the mug cake. Um, it shouldn't change that much. I've already done it with vanilla. Um, I just, like I said, I try to, since it doesn't have like the extra moisture, kind of, of the peanut butter, I reduce the time a little bit more. So uh, instead of that 60 seconds straight away, I usually put it 45 until I get like that consistency. But otherwise you should have like the same like cake type consistency um, regarding which ingredients that you put. All right, yeah. So, so the, the vanilla, that's totally fine. Yeah. Just reduce the time 15 seconds. Yeah, the question was, uh, whoever posted the question said, yes, it was referring to what you just mentioned. So that's it. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Have a great Perfect. rest of your weekend. And then next week, we'll have a few more live streams as well. Um, and yeah, hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Bye, guys.